Hey guys, welcome to a new video. As always, I've been browsing AliExpress and during one of my tours uh, looking for new LEDs and LED strip, I came across a new form of LED strip. Of course, we all know the WS2815, which is a, well, it mostly looks like a WS2813, so it has dual data line. But instead of 5 volt, it's a 12 volt digitally addressable LED strip where the controller itself is inside the chip, like WS2812B, we all know, or SK6812. So that's 12 volt, that's interesting. Um, I did some tests in my power calculation chart, and as you can see there, if you set a single color, so red, green, or blue, the other colors still, still need to drop the voltage, so their power usage during uh, non-white scenarios is quite high. But during effects, it does lower a little bit. Now, a little while ago, I came across a new variant, which BTF called BTF2815. This is supposedly a clone chip, which they uh, position basically as the same as a WS2815. But there was something interesting on their page. It said that it could take up to 24 volts, where of course WS2815 is only 12 volts. They even had a weird statement on there that said like, uh, even for 24 hours, 24 volt, not burn. And then it said that the WS2815 would have burned and stuff like that. But that got me thinking of an interesting test. Let's hook up uh, WS2815 and BTF2815 or UCS1903 LED chips and feed them exactly the same data. And uh, let's raise the voltage and uh, see where it goes. So I built my little uh, test setup here. And while my very crappy bench power supply only goes up to 30 volts, but I would think that would be enough because uh, basically the LEDs would be getting double the normal forwarding voltage they should get. So yeah, either they have to burn it off as heat or it just goes up in flames. So I have my, uh, my f can of fire stop and uh, if all things go wrong, I can, I guess I can spray this. It'll probably destroy everything I own, but we'll see. Um, I had to build a special Queen LED Dig Uno for this. The normal modules uh, have capacitors that only go up to 16 volts. That is because, well, most addressable LED strip stops at around 12 volts. So normally that's enough. Now, if you watch my latest Quinbox episode, there I received 35 volt 1000 UF capacitors. So I built a model with those and uh, that should be able to hand handle the higher voltage, no problem. Um, yeah, well, not much to say. We're just going to uh, look at this. It's getting exactly the same data, except that the color order of uh, WS2815 and BTF2815 is different. So uh, while you're seeing different colors, red and green are basically reversed, blue is the same channel. Uh, they are doing exactly the same thing. And um, we'll see which one fails first. And we're going to start with a little rainbow pattern and then we'll choose a single color for instance. And after that we can do full white. And uh, this might be a very short test where something just fizzes out and it's gone. Uh, or it might be a very long test, and then I'll try and do a time lapse and see which one wins out, I guess. Um, let's get to it. Okay, I think everything is in place. As I said, we're going to start with the rainbow pattern. And because this uh, bench power supply is so shitty, I hooked in a separate multimeter which isn't that great either, but a lot better than the voltage on this thing because it drifts all kinds of places. Anyway, we have the top cam and we have the, well, my normal camera. And uh, well, let's start. We are now doing, as I said, the rainbow pattern at 100%. And uh, these are 30 LEDs and I've split the data line. So the data lines are going to both the, in the normal and the backup data line on both sets from a single port on the Queen LED Dig Uno, and all power is also being passed through it. Okay, let's, uh, well, let's just start raising it up, I guess. 14, 15, not noticing that much yet. 16, 
17, 18 volts. Okay. Probably uh, that they're getting hotter. Still okay, I guess. Let's go up to 20 volts. Oh, wait, wait, wait. The WS2815 crapped out. See that here? Oh, okay. Let's dial it back. Okay. If we dial it back to, let's say, 15 and a half volts. Now the WS2815 is working again fine. And well, the BTF2815 didn't give a, didn't give a crimp. Didn't give a crimp. I don't know. Let's go back to, uh, see if I turn up voltage. Most of the 2815 LEDs are now off and W the BTF2815 or UCS1903 seems to be doing fine. Okay. Let's back it off again. Interesting. It comes back. Let me uh, quickly change the setting uh, that the LEDs are displaying. Okay. Turns out they weren't set to 100%, uh, but set to 50% during the rainbow pattern. I cho chose the noise one pattern from WLED and let's uh, raise the voltage again. Same thing is happening. The WS2815, we're now around 20 volts. Well, it's crapping out. Doesn't really display that much anymore. Interesting. If I back it off, yeah, it comes back. Okay. So it still seems to work. Let's go all the way up to 24 volts and see if it craps out completely. Okay, my multimeter needs to be switched. 24 volts. Well, I guess uh, BTF really didn't lie that the UCS1903 is a lot more capable voltage-wise than the WS2815 is, because it only has a single red LED that's glowing over here, but nothing else is working anymore. Let's see if, I, if we back it off. Well, comes right back. Let's go to a solid and let's do blue because that's the only one they share in color and see if we go down in voltage if intensity changes 6 volts 5 volts 4 volts okay again WS2815 craps out earlier than BTF2815 wow okay the voltage regulator on the, the UCS1903 or the BTF2815 is really good. We're at 2.5 volts and this is 12 volt LED strip. Okay, let's go back up. Oh, okay, controller reset because, well, it just wasn't getting enough voltage. Okay, well, that makes sense. Um, let's go back to solid, full power and blue. Okay, so we're at 4.5 volts. Okay, that did change in intensity, but let's see if it does if we go up higher. Uh, they might be getting a little bit brighter, but not that much. Yeah, so the maximum point is around 18 volts for WS2815. Cool, okay, let's uh, back it off again. And see if we do full power white, if that changes anything. 12 volts. Interesting, the more voltage we apply, the more the WS2815 dims, but the BTF2815 doesn't really change. Okay, cool. Okay, let's go all the way to 24. Yeah, it's trying to do something with that red LED, but I don't know what. Let's go all the way to 30. Oh, okay, now the BTF2815 kind of turned blue on me. WS2815 just lost the race, it's just gone. Let's uh, leave it for uh, a little bit. I'll, uh, I'll, skip, I'll, I'll skip a minute and leave it set to this. Okay, it's been about a minute, and well, what I can tell you, the WS2815 is uh, 
Well, it's warm, but the BTF 2815 is scorching hot. Ow! What the hell? And I'm, I'm starting to smell it a little bit, I think. Let's uh, back off voltage. Okay, it's getting back to white. Now we're below 20 volts, so WS2815 comes back. Let's put him back to 12 volt. Everything is still white, so no individual color LEDs died. Interesting. So, I guess what they said is true. BTF2815, or the UCS1903 uh, strip, is a lot more voltage tolerant than original WS2815 is. But, I'm not sure I'd be comfortable running it at 24 volts, because, well... The voltage has to go somewhere, so the only way it can basically expel it, it's not giving off more light, so it's basically just burning it off. Interesting. Well, um, okay, uh, let's keep this set to white, and I'll just keep this running for an hour or so, and then report back to you guys. Okay, it's been exactly one hour, and as you could see in the thermal shots I overlaid over the time lapse, is that this BTF2815, and, and I can still feel it, gets really, really hot. I mean, we're talking over 100 degrees Celsius, so that's, that's a lot. Um, the WS2815 didn't get that hot, but of course the LEDs aren't displaying anything. And what I'm wondering now is if we lower the voltage again, will they come on? And while we can see no LEDs died in the BTF2815 or the UCS1903, but let's uh, start turning this down. Interesting. So it must have some, or the WS2815 must have some over voltage protection because now that we're back at 12 volts, it's all still working like it should. Cool. Let's uh, let's put a little pattern on. Yeah. Well, that still works. Let's uh, do some color waves, I guess. Uh, make it a little bit, uh, I don't know, a little bit slower. There we go. That's nice. Um. Yeah. Well, a few things have been pointed out. My bench power supply is total and utter crap. I mean, it displayed anything from 11 volts to 17 or 27, I don't know. It, it's just all over the place. My, uh, my model meter is a lot better in that regard. And it also seems to differ voltage in regards to what the power draws. Um, w, conclusion time, WS2815 can survive 24 volt, but it won't display anything above 18 volt. Uh, and the BTF2815, or UCS1903, will work fine at 24 volt, but especially running full RGB white, uh, well, that's a challenge for any LED strip that isn't being cooled, it runs really hot, and I'm actually surprised it survived, uh, well, as well as it did. And, uh, yeah, well, my desk seemed fine. These are actually printed in PLA, so I was... Uh, Kind of afraid that they might start uh, deforming or warping, but that seems to be okay. So, no spectacular fireworks or explosions. Um, this one is better in uh, dealing with higher voltages. So, for instance, if you're going to use it in a car where you don't always get uh, 12 volt exactly, but it can be 14 or 15 volt, this chip might be better at handling that than the original 2815. 
brightness wise they're about the same and it doesn't get influenced that much with more voltage and uh, yeah this was just a fun test and I hope you find this information useful. Make sure to check out my uh, updated power sheet. I've also added the power measurements uh, for the BTF 2815. And uh, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.